You know, technology like our world is ever changing. Once was closed off by big billion dollar corporations, have now been opened up by awesome communities and the price of free. You know, for 15 years plus, I've been involved in technology, administrating systems from Windows to OS X. But now I've heard of something new, something awesome, something open, and something free, and it's called Linux. My name is Chase Nunes, and I'm switching to Linux. This episode of How To Linux is brought to you by Linux Academy. Go to linuxacademy.com slash howto and participate in the summer of learning. Get a 33% discount for the next three months. What is Linux Academy? It is the place you can go at your own pace to take your Linux skills up to the next level. They've got step-by-step -step video courses. Build and rebuild your servers in seconds using any distribution you want, and they'll customize the materials to match your distribution. You can keep track of your progress. And, of course, they've got study guides that you can download. And you know what else? It comes with its own server built in as the courses require. Linux Academy will spin up a virtual server. It's the summer of learning over at linuxacademy.com slash howto. All right, so here's the deal, you guys. I'm making the jump to Linux. And first, there are many different flavors of it, right? There's Ubuntu, there's Arch, there's these other ones I haven't even heard of. So I got to figure out what I'm going to pick. There is somebody I can call on. There's somebody that I know that, I, that can really help me. And uh, I'm going to head there now. I think he's going to be the one to help. Hey, guys. Welcome to the show. Hey, Chase. Hey, Chris. By the way, this is Chris Fisher. He hey, guys. He is the host of the world's largest Linux podcast called the Linux Action Show. Boom. How long have you been doing that? It's like going on eight years now. Totally awesome. Yeah. And by the way, if you haven't checked that out yet, check it out. Linux Action Show. You're making me blush. Quite I know, it. I know. But that's not why I'm here. Okay. Why are you here, Chase? I'm here because I'm having issues again. Oh, no. Yeah. More registry problems? Dude, I'm getting these weird network issues. Yeah. It's crazy. And then you try to figure out and install a new driver. It's well, nuts. Yeah. I'm getting tired of it. I understand. And not only that, you know, you know, I'm always trying to improve my skills when it comes to Linux. Right. You know, make myself more employable. Yeah. So you know what I'm thinking? What? Chase, what are you, where are you going with this, Chase? I'm making the switch to Linux, man. What, Chase? Yeah. I'm... I'm gonna is do that it. Why you're doing a how-to Linux yeah, show? Yeah, I'm gonna do it on the laptop because okay. I figure this is a great transitional yeah. tool for me. I use my laptop everywhere, so I'll get really engrossed into it. Okay. But I have a few reservations. Okay. Just a few. All right. First off, my my applications. You know, I use Office a lot. I use a lot of financial apps. You okay. know, things like that. So I don't think that should be a problem. Should be we, an issue. I think we can take care of that. Okay. You know, like printers and other. Weird I don't things. think that should be a problem. You have that brother printer, right? I do. Same printer I have. Cool. Shouldn't right. be a problem. All right. Next thing, yeah. all my docs, you know, am I going to be yeah. able to move those over quite easily? Are they going to be compatible? That's going to depend. Okay. Now, uh, I, I like to recommend that people look at their options here because this could be also a good time right. to consider backing up. Okay. Yo, Do course. you use Dropbox? Yeah, Dropbox is great. You guys know Dropbox. Use yeah. Dropbox or something else like it. Yep. Back up your data. Yeah, and even if you're not using Dropbox, you can check out Bit BitTorrent Sync or SyncThing. But since you are using Dropbox, yeah. Dropbox makes a client available okay. for Linux. You'll all have right. no problem. You install it. All your documents will pull down. All right, that's easy. Now, here's a big one for me personally. I, you guys know I'm a big gamer, all right? And there's a lot of games, especially on Steam, that I'm like... Have you been following the Steam development on Linux? A little bit, but... It's like, actually getting pretty is, good. Is and every now? week they add more games. Wow. Not everything's there. Like, you don't... There's not a one-to-one -one Windows uh, equivalent. For right, all the, right. But a lot of good games well, are A lot there. of my major games that I play, like, say, like, Counter-Strike. Definitely. Or, or, so th that should work. A few of my favorite okay. games are available for Linux now. And they're bringing more over all the time. So we can check that out. I think you'll be surprised. Okay. So here's the most sensitive thing I know is which... Linux do I pick, right? Which operating, which, because I know there's like loads of different I know, versions. and you and I have talked about this before, and I know this is something that's kind of gotten you hung up in the past. Well, I, I, I think I picked one, and the reason why I, I think, I, I'm going with Ubuntu. Is that how you say it? Ubuntu? Ubuntu, yeah. The reason why I picked Ubuntu is, from all I see, it's got a lot of support behind it, there's a big community behind it, but moreover, it's easy to kind of, Ease sure. yourself into it. Is That's that a, a good, good distro. Yeah. In fact, uh, Ubuntu 14.04 just came out a little bit ago. It's a long-term support, so it's going to get patches for years. Right. Uh, it's well supported for Steam. In fact, that's Valve's targeted Linux desktop. All right. And you know, to be honest with you, Chase, you can start with Ubuntu, see what you think, right. and then as we try out different projects on how to yeah. Linux, we'll try out different distributions. Yeah. You can try out a bunch of different stuff, see what you like. It took me years to find a Linux I've, distribution I really love. And I bet, I bet you still try different ones, right? All, all the, the time. All, all the time. All the so. time. It's part of the fun, to be honest with you. It's, so it, I think one of the advantages over Windows. Yeah. So here's the thing. We, we, I think I got it worked out. I know what I want to do. 
But we got to start baby steps, right? We got to start with actually getting that distribution yes. going, right? Yeah, and I know in the past when you've talked about it, you said you downloaded an ISO image. <laughs> yeah, I burned it to CD. Yeah, you can actually still do that. You can still do that. I'm retro. Sometimes I like to do that. Right. But there's much easier ways now. I'd love to show it to you. Well, let's take a look. All right, Chase. Well, since we've just picked Ubuntu, the easiest way for you to get started is to go download a little tool. You have a thumbstick, right? I do. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of, you have, have of them. Is it at least like eight gigs? Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah. Then uh, go get Rufus. We'll have All a right. link to this in the show notes. It's R-U-F-U-S. And uh, this is a tool that lets you write image CD images to USB thumbsticks. So then once you get Rufus, go over to Ubuntu.com slash download and pull down that ISO image. Okay? Now, do I, do I grab the full ISO image? Well, here, I'll show so you. I know there's different ones on you have So they have they have, uh, they have a couple of different versions of Ubuntu. You're going to get Ubuntu desktop, right? Right. And uh, because we're going to throw this on a 64-bit machine, you could choose 32-bit if, uh, you, if you had it on an older computer, but we'll go 64-bit for you. Uh, and you'll also notice right here, they, they encourage you to donate. Um, if you're not sure if you're all in, maybe next time you download Ubuntu, if you decide you like it, you donate. But if you're not sure yet, there's actually a little not now button. You click that, it skips all the payment stuff. And then here in a few seconds, the download will auto start. Now, do I get anything for donating, like additional support or anything like that? No, or? but one of the things that's kind of cool about it is it's kind of humble bundle style where you could choose, you could slide. So, like, I oh, want most I of my see. funding to go to the desktop. That's cool. Okay. Yeah. So, and if you're not really big on, say, the I'm not saying I'm, phone. I'm not outside of doing it in the future. It's just one of those things where right now it's so new to me. I don't, right. you know, yeah. I don't so know what So, you can come the, back later. Right. Okay. All right. So, now we've got Rufus downloaded. I downloaded it earlier before we started here on your machine. And uh, once you run Rufus, you start it up, uh, point it at the USB thumbstick. So we already named ours Install Ubuntu, and this is our E drive right here. Got it. Yeah. Make sure the file system is FAT32, not NTFS. Yeah, I know. That's habit. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's just with the default. You know, well, yeah, I mean, that. here it is. We're on Windows. I mean, yeah. yeah why, why wouldn't it be? Uh, and uh, so then you choose your ISO, which uh, in our case, ours is still downloading, so we can't choose it yet. But you would choose your ISO, and then Bob's your Uncle Chase. Uh, you'd be ready to go. But. So this is this is the way of doing it. If I obviously on this laptop, I don't I don't have a uh, burner, right? So this is the only way for me to do it. Well, I think it's faster too. And in your yeah. case, because you've got USB three, it really smokes. It's oh, yeah. super fast to install from the USB yeah, three. Great for file transfer. It's awesome. So I've chosen right here, uh, create a bootable disk using ISO image, and then once the once the download finishes, you would just choose that. Uh, click start, it will write it, and then next we reboot and we install Ubuntu. So when your machine, after this, once your machine boots up, be sure you hit whatever key it is on your keyboard. Yeah, to it does select my boot drive, yeah. and then I use my USB drive, yep. right? And then, yeah, I've done that before many times. Yeah, and then the Ubuntu, and, and what's great is you get to go inside an Ubuntu live environment and make sure how it runs okay on your computer, and you get to make sure that your video card works and your network card works on, before you ever even write anything to the hard drive. So I don't write anything to the hard drive. It, it's it, it's a live thing. So it doesn't make any changes just to my, live, yep, my it's Windows. Just running files. and on you'll you'll see running off a USB three thumbstick. It's it'll run so fast you'd be happy just running off that all the time. Well, I was going to ask. I mean, do I feel a performance hit running non natively though, like that? Uh, it is essentially native. It's just the storage is on the USB stick. It's no emulation. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, Let's but give, I can't. But I can't write to the hard drives or anything, right? When you're doing you this method, you or? could. I mean, you could format the hard drives, but it le gives you a chance to try it out. That's cool. Before you write anything to the hard drive. Got it. Okay. Should we give it a go? Let's do it, man. This is your Ubuntu desktop right here. This is your live environment. All right. And you see right there, there's the icon to install Ubuntu 14.04. Just double click that. Okay. So this is what I'm gonna get. This is what I get first, obviously. This is what everybody gets first, essentially. Yeah, you can uh, you chose the try it option, so it took you to the desktop. Right. Uh, if you did the go right to install, it would take you right to this. It wouldn't load the full desktop. I up. see. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you go through. It's pretty standard. Does you know prompts? You want to do English, obviously. English, right? Okay. Because yeah, that's what you speak. Last time I tried. Most. Of the time. <laughs> yeah, most of the time. Yeah. All right. And now here is just checking to make sure your drive has enough space. Okay. Uh, one of the nice things you can do is download updates while installing. But since we're gonna go kind of quick today, we don't really need to do that. But that's kind of neat, right? Yeah. But do check that install third-party software. That way, all your MP3 collection and stuff works. Oh. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to do that manually. Yeah. Like you got the fact. Yep. Yep. You got to go back and add it. All right. So now it's going, and then this is what probably the point of no return. It right here. Like. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, since this is going to be one of many installations, you can go pretty simple here. But uh, you would traditionally want to go in here. Why don't you click something else just so you can kind of see what it looks like? Oh, no, I mean oh, the, the option there's something else. Yeah, click that and then go to continue. 
Uh, it'll bring up the drive partition right here. So this is where you could lay out a drive partition scheme. Do you want to do it by hand? Uh, well, I typically don't. Okay. I mean, for personal. For all right. Well, personally. then hit back. Okay. All right. And uh, then just choose um, uh, that top, erase, install, and it will do all the partitioning now, for you. Now, lately I've been hearing a lot about encryption. Do mm -hmm. I do? What if I want to do encryption? Is, is that dangerous to do here, or should I do that after? The, or can you do that after? The oh, sure. Oh, okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Or you could turn on there. You could do it after the fact. I I'll usually do it after don't. the fact. Uh, yeah. I usually go. Uh, I can show you a method to do it where you do it folder by folder. Oh, okay. Instead of the whole. Well, thing. I can see that in the future then for sure. So, all right. So I'm going to hit install now. And, and then this is what? This is where just like Windows that right. I used to know, it just goes. The Windows that works. I used to know. So, first tell it where you're at. All right. What's kind of cool is while you're going through this, that's fine. All right. Well, Los Angeles yeah, is in our time zone. kind of your best bet. Right. Uh, it'll actually start installing it once you uh, answer a few more questions. It'll actually start installing. Wow, it in I'll look at all the different keyboards. You could go crazy. Wow. You could look. You could go crazy. I don't know. I don't think that'd be a very good idea, though. No, no. I'm, I'm going to be very good here. So this is where I type in my info. Yeah. So I'll just type in my name. Chase. And uh, I, I'm just going to go with Chase, right? Yeah, that's uh, fine. And put right. your password in there. So put you, a good password. Now, do you want it to log in automatically for you, or, or uh, do you like to have it? Do you like to put your password? I'm okay with it logging in automatically. Okay. Right. Then I usually use the screensaver or something. Yeah. I'm just gonna do a real short password for for the install. Yeah, for yeah. the install. I for the demo install. It. Okay. Do continue here. All right. And uh, so now uh, you see it's actually been installing in the background that whole time. What? So it's <laughs> actually gotten pretty far. That's and, pretty crazy. Yeah, it's nice. It makes it go. It makes it feel like it goes quicker. Cause it, so it's tricking me. Yeah, they're, <laughs> it's they're using trick. that time wisely. You could say it. You can expand uh, down here too if you like me. I like to get all kind of crazy and see what it's doing. So you can get a little. Oh bit wow, of, that's get so a little, you actually see the console. Little, little geeky console stuff right yeah. there. Yeah. And you can actually jump around to other consoles and check to see what it's doing. Uh, the other thing that's nice about being able to expand that out is if you had checked that, go out and get updates, you could be like, well, why is the installer hanging up right here? And You, you can could, actually see what's going on. Yeah, you would expand that and go, oh, it's pulling down a package right now. Oh. It's a big download. I device. wish Windows actually did that. I mean, there's been many times where I'm installing Windows, and I feel like it's stopped for some reason. Mm-hmm. And You're like, I think that progress bar is lying to me. Right, right. Or it starts <laughs> to go forward and then it comes backwards. Yeah, yeah. And then they, of course they have like uh, they have like all these little slide things. And what's kind of neat about this is while your system is installing, you could actually say launch Firefox and go browse the web. You so can play that's solitaire. That's a little ironic to me that you can be doing th other things in the background. Yeah, there it is. There's freaking. There's Firefox. Firefox, so you, right? So you could go read That's your crazy. Twitter feed while, uh, uh, you know, while while your operating system is installing, or go catch up on. Email. Are, you, are you trying to tell me I should check out the Linux Action Show while I'm installing Linux? You could. You could watch, or you could catch the back episodes of How to Linux if this is far in the future. Hmm, maybe I'll throw up on filter on there. I'm not sure. You could. I could or do that. Catch a little tech talk today because there's a de there's a new show every single day. Oh, I should do that. It's, it's Monday through Thursday, right? That is. Yeah, it's shameless TV. plug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So uh, it's it's kind of a whole different experience because in Windows when you're installing, yeah. it's a full screen take over that's all you can do uh in this you you could actually you could see there there's office there's libre office but, but that's if i do the the demo first right if right, i the if live I, cd if, if, I, if, right I, if I went to install then yeah. i wouldn't be able to mm -hmm. surf the web and stuff yeah. it does it go slower since i am doing this demo and installing would it go faster if i just did the straight install? no not really the only thing that might slow down is when you're browsing the web and stuff i see because you know that does sort of take on uh, adds additional so i don't know if you just noticed right there but it was actually just saying it's pulling down some of the packages so it is pulling down some packages right now and installing them i see and now and, it's running the post installation does it do scripts. that because it's the most current versions of those packages is that how it stays more current likely there's still probably going to likely be updates but oh, okay. so in this case you can tell to pull down all updates or security updates or right. just get the codex it, and and then there's some distributions that will show you in the future right that when you download it it doesn't have it doesn't have any packages on its cd it pulls everything off the web so it's the every single package is the absolute latest there's now, a lot there's a whole range of options now i do see that's configuring hardware it's doing all these things yep it, it, this is essentially drivers right this is stuff that it's uh, installing f that i don't have to worry about well so in in linux you can install drivers all right but traditionally uh this is going to sound crazy but uh all of the hardware support is built into the linux kernel so that you, feels weird to me <laughs> so you kind of know like on it like when you install yeah. os 10 on a mac yeah you always know that mac hardware is supported because os 10 has all the yeah, drivers yeah they're handling it yeah so in 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 this scenario here the linux kernel has the uh the nvidia driver uh, or or, or a, a close enough actually that's one case where it doesn't but it has uh it has all of your drivers built in for like your network your uh 
all of the individual components, USB bus, uh, right. you know, all that stuff is built into the Linux kernel. So when it boots, it automatically has support for that. Then you can install additional drivers. Like NVIDIA is a good example. When we're done, yeah, I was gonna say, we'll yeah. install the NVIDIA driver for you. And then you can uh, you get 3D support. But you could also, uh, in some cases, like the Intel video cards, the Intel video card, because of work from Intel, They've contributed code because the Linux kernel is open source. They've contributed code for the driver to the Linux kernel right from Intel. Because one thing I know that I have to do periodically for my desktop machine is update the chipset drivers. Right. And I, I always do that. I always check on them maybe every quarter, every three months or so. Mm -hmm. I won't have to do that here. No, in almost every case, Linux kernel updates will do that. And here's a cool thing, too. It's like I mentioned the Intel support. Yeah. Uh, the Intel developers have already been working on Broadwell support. The new CPU from Intel is not even out yet. Yeah. They're already putting Broadwell code into the existing Linux kernel that's being developed right wow. now. Wow. So uh, they're, because a lot of these guys now make money off of Linux in some capacity, it's actually in their business interest to just help build that support in. And when they don't, the open source community often picks up and fills in the gaps, like in the case of NVIDIA's open source driver. I see. Now, one thing I'm noticing here... I don't have an AMD system. This is an Intel system. Why is it saying AMD 64 there? AMD 64 is in reference to the architecture. Uh, oh. So the uh, the 64-bit architecture that we use on desktop computers today was actually came up by Intel or by AMD, and Intel just sort of went with it. Oh. So AMD 60. It, it, this is originally the AMD 64 spec. So there you go, Chase. Your installation wow. is done. Now you could continue just using the live environment, like if you were in the middle of writing an email, uh, or you can click restart, and we would reboot into your new Ubuntu desktop. Well, geez, man. Well, I'm ready to get this rolling. Might as well get it started right now. So I'm going to click that restart right now. All right, Chris, I got to say thanks for showing us and showing everybody at Absolutely. home. Absolutely. How to install Ubuntu on a USB disk and throw it on your machine. How cool is Rufus? Dude, that thing is awesome. Yeah, you can use it Real for all kinds of easy. stuff. It's a great tool. So, Chris, you are a doctor here. Ask the you, doctor, Chase, you, what is it? What's on your mind? I'm not going to ask you that question, but I need to know the prescription. What's my prescription for the next week? What's next? Yeah, what's next? All right, take this laptop home. Take it home. Play oh, with well, it over the I'm week. I'm taking it home. It's my laptop. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's, mm -hmm. It's easy prescription, right? Yeah, easy. I'm the, I'm the kind of doctor well, what am like. I doing with it? Play with it. Try right. different stuff. Just like you would own and customize a brand new Windows box, right. try stuff out. You are in a good position because yeah. you've got a desktop at home. So if you like, so if I have case, an issue, yeah. If you, if you break something, which you probably won't. But if you did, okay. you've got a safety net. Yeah. So try stuff out. Load different apps got on it. there. See yeah. how it goes. Then come back to me with a whole bunch of questions, and we'll start solving problems for you. Dude, that sounds easy. Yeah. I cannot wait to mess with it. You know I'm a gamer, so I'm probably going to throw that Steam on there Do we it. talked about Do it. earlier in the show. Now, here's the deal, you guys. As you can tell, this is the biggest show we've ever done here on mm -hmm. Jupiter Broadcasting. That's you know, for sure. First off, I got Chris here helping me out. I'm a doctor. Way. You know I'm a doctor. Expensive. But now we need your help. That's right. And that's where patreon.com slash Linux. Boom, there play. it is, patreon.com slash Linux. That's a great URL. And yeah. with this show, Jupiter Broadcasting is launching on its most ambitious project Huge. ever. We have a staff of producers. We have on-location shoots we're going to do. And we have months of content planned. Yes. So we really would love to have our audience support this show because we really want to create a living show that goes out and documents cool and awesome things you can do with Linux and maybe and eventually do it multiple times a week. You know, we've we got so many cool things in store. I, I cannot wait to share them with you. Yeah. Uh, we've already done some stuff ahead of time. You're going to love it. Yep. It's going to be awesome. Really excited. So you can help keep our show going and even grow and expand what it covers by going to patreon.com slash Linux. We will scale the scope of this yeah. show as your support scales. Now Pretty one-to-one. You, -one. you can also follow us on the Twitter at what? How to Linux. Yeah. yeah. That'd actually yeah, be a really that. good way to it's give really us some topic suggestions. Yeah. If there's things you'd like to see us tweet do us. on the show, tweet it at us, How yeah. to Linux on you can, the tweeters. You can also email us, how to Linux at jupiterbroadcasting.com. Absolutely. You can give us your suggestions. If you thought I made a weird mistake or something that I missed, maybe a nice helpful tip. Or if, remember, I'm a noob. Or if you know of another tool like Rufus that you like even more, send it in to us either at the at HowToLinux account on Twitter or at that email address. I just want to say a big thanks to this guy right here, Mr. Chris Fisher. This guy is awesome. Oh, stop. I want to say a big thanks to our producer, Eric. Eric Swatch, and thank you, buddy. You rock. And also to our awesome community, all you guys who submitted your ideas to Last and Linux Unplugged on this awesome show. Thank you so much for watching us. We'll see you guys again next week. Bye.